What's up, my geeks, or as they say in Korea, Annyeong Haseyo. Jeffrey Powers here with Geekazine CES 2024. We're here at the SK booth, and we're going to learn a lot about the enterprise end of things, and we're going to do that next. Of course, SK is SK Telecom. Believe it or not, SK does not stand for South Korea. It stands for Songyang. If you ever go to South Korea, you probably connect up through SK Telecom. They have a big presence here at CES. They have the uh, Tomorrowland, which if you ever go to uh, South Korea and go to the main offices, they have a tour. I went there uh, about five years ago. It's a great, fun little excursion, and we're getting a small taste of it here at CES. We're going to go around and we're going to talk to some of these people and find out how they're making all of this. Let's do that next. All right, we're over here at the AI Media Studio. We have Yoon here and he's going to help us understand what's going on. Uh, AI Media Studio is simply the implementation of SK Telecom's media technology on okay. cloud. Okay. We provide four services. Uh, Supernova, AI Caption Generation, Sound Distill, AI AI transporter. Okay. First, AI transporter transport video in various resolution from LD, HD to UHD. By splitting a video file and processing them in parallel, we achieve post reduction of more than 50% compared to previous method. So what you're saying is you're cutting the video in half mm -hmm. and you're taking part A and part B mm -hmm. and processing them at the same time mm -hmm. and then putting part A and part B back together. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. It contains upscaling and video re restoration. Okay. Video restoration. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. if you got an older video mm -hmm. and you want to make it yeah, look, yeah, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. make it look crisp and, and, yeah. and everything like yeah, that. Yeah. How high, how much of a resolution can we do nowadays? Uh, from SD to UHD. To UHD? Mm. Okay. Let's talk about caption generation. The caption generation use uh, automatic speech recognition technology and speech to subtitle synchronization. Okay. Yeah, because time code is very important to user. Okay. So basically what this is creating captions, mm. creating captions in other languages. Mm -hmm. So how about the sound still? Oh yeah. Sound still is simply Audio source separation technology. Okay. It can separate, uh, it can remove noise from mixture sound. Okay. And it can separate uh, music source, for example, drum, bass, uh, piano. Okay. Yeah, so if like there guess. was, if there was music in the yeah, background yeah. we're recording, uh, the, uh, the sound still would actually take the, whatever's noise is in the background and, and just take out, sure, take that sure. out. Basically, we're, we're creating a whole bunch of different content mm -hmm. and we're making it easy for somebody to consume. Yeah. All right, well, come say Thank you. Thank you. All right, we're here at the Litimus Plus uh, booth. We got Kine here and uh, tell us, it's all about a uh, location tracking, right? Yes, right. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about it. This is a dig digital twin system that okay. delivers information on people's movement and network details on okay. uh, this regional basis or building basis. Usually, the, this kind of information is provided based on just the general district level. All right. But Lit Litmus Plus um, can provide like high resolution level. Like this edge is about 200 meters. Okay. So this is really small size. And uh, you can notice how many people are there or how many people are going from or moving to with okay. this a small size basis. Okay. Yeah. So my understanding of this is, uh, so let's say you have, th this is, let's say this is the grocery store Yeah. and you have people over here and you have people over here. It's tracking how many people are coming from here to the grocery yes. store, how many people are coming from here to the grocery yeah, store. Yeah, yeah. And so if the grocery store is getting more traffic from here and less traffic from here, they might start thinking about putting the grocery store right there. Right. Right. And then these people will have a uh, shorter travel, less impact on the environment. Yes, yeah, because we can we know that like people's origin and destination. Okay. We actually have the specific scenario that you made an example. So using the data that I explained before, mm -hmm. we can like um, solve many complex urban issues 
So this is one example. Okay. So um, this leading range now has been greatly expanded. All right. And our analysis shows that um, the vehicle movement for shopping purposes um, has been concentrated in okay. this specific area. Oh, okay. Yes. Yeah, so, so yeah. So you got people coming from these parts of Shoshodong. They're all coming here to yeah. this uh, this wholesale club. Yeah, yeah. So it would be better to have the wholesale club right. in this area yes. rather Close than this to area. this area. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, using our analysis, we can like provide the alternative location for okay. like opening new shopping mall. People's travel time can be reduced, and it can also make a, a carbon emission decrease. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So our data can be utilized in this kind of situation. All right, so that's Litmus Plus. That's yeah. that's very interesting. So, come see yeah. <laughs> All right, next up we have Excalibur. We got Sheen here, and this is about your pet? Yes. How does that how does this work? So, Excalibur is a veterinary AI diagnostic service. Okay. So, it's for your pets also and it's for vets. This is the Excalibur platform and it, we are supporting now dogs and cats, musculoskeletal, thoracic and abdominal diseases, and also VHS, which is measuring your pet's heart size. Really? Yeah. Okay. So if you upload your pet's x-ray image to this Excalibur platform, you can receive AI diagnostic results in 15 seconds. Wow. Yeah. So this is the musculoskeletal diseases and the areas, predicted disease, probability, and symptoms. Okay. So veterinarians, they can actually see the results and get help when they diagnose the pets. Okay. Mm. And that's using all AI yes, to do course. that. Yes, yes. In there. What type of accuracy does this have? Uh, we are saying about 90% of accuracy. 90%, yes. wow. So, and of course, uh, what about other animals like horses or anything like we are that? We're not, not supporting uh, animals other than dogs and cats right now. Okay. Yeah. we are. Like focusing on diagnosing more types of bees to animals because people have the most the, the most popular pets. Okay. They raise the most. And uh, and this is being used right now. Yeah. Uh, in Korea, there are over five hundred veterinary clinics that are using Excalibur right now. You said in, in Korea, but I'm assuming that everybody has a dog and a cat around the world. Of so, uh, what are your plans for expansion? Yeah, we're also planning to expand globally. We're actually having contracts with companies in Japan, Singapore, and Australia now. And we're also expected, expecting to expand it to U.S. Europe this year. Okay, perfect. Well, come see them now. Yeah. Thank you. Now we're here at the Intelligence Vision booth. Uh, tell us what, what's going on here. Yeah, so when we mention science or biology in particular, one of the first images that appears in people's minds is the microscope, right? The optical microscope, and for good reason because it's used in all sorts of biological investigations when we're looking at microscopic entities like cells or proteins, you name it. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of applications that it's used. The microvision sensor that SK has developed is the world's first, and it uses a CMOS semiconductor image sensors, CIS, okay. to basically perform the same function that you would get from the optical microscope. Oh, okay. And one application of that is shown here, uh, we've all seen a COVID antigen test, right? Yeah. And um, this device can be used to perform the same function. You simply pipette a sample of saliva or blood or urine over the lens, plug it into your personal device. We're talking a cell phone or a computer here, press okay. test and get results in just moments, seconds. Oh, wow. And I'm assuming it's more than just COVID tests that so you can do that with, right? Yeah, any kinds of tests are possible. And in fact, we have another device here that uses the same semiconductor sensor technology for cell counting. Okay. So this is in the lab uh, for uh, putting a sample on here of tissue and checking not only the quantity of the cells, but the viability. That means which cells are living and which cells are not. Yeah. The third product we have here is called the Soul Live. This has the same semiconductor image sensor technology inside, and this is for a uh, cell cultivation environment. So you may have an incubator, and an incubator, uh, it's kind of laborious to, uh, to count the cell growth over time because you can't place the optical microscope inside. 
Okay. This is actually designed to be small and light enough to go in there and perform all of the cell growth calculations and reaction measuring automatically and just alert you when milestones are reached. All right. Well, this is that's amazing. So you'd be able to do a lot of things that the microscope would use to do. But now you don't need a microscope for that. Yeah. Imagine a world where we do biology and science without a microscope at all. That's and crazy. that's what this kind of technology can deliver. That's cool. And that's out now. This is in development. The Soul Count is out now, mm -hmm. and Soul Live should be out this year. And this uh, micro digital uh, microscope should be out soon. Okay. And uh, in South Korea or around the world? Uh, we currently have customers in uh, multiple countries around the world. Okay. And we're expanding all the time and looking for additional partners. Okay. So, yeah, we're expanding all the time. All right. Perfect. Well, Michael, thank you very much for your time. Thank you. We got Choi here, and this is kind of a data center that's behind us, a yes. uh, representation of a data center. And we're going to be going down the line. We're going to be talking about all the uh, energy solutions and everything like that. And we're going to start with energy solutions. Yes. So tell us what we got here. Yeah, since the AI services are increasing, so demand for the AI data center also increased. So we define our AI data center not only the, the AI solution, but also the infrastructure to support the okay. high performance computing. The first sector is the energy solution. Mm -hmm. uh, since the, sometimes the off-site power is unstable, so we are aiming to adopt also the on-site power. The advantage of this is okay. we can utilize the renewable energy like wind or solar or the fuel cell. The AI, AI power operator can uh, the balance between the many energy sources like off-site power or on-site powers and many renewable energy sources. Okay, yeah. so if there's less wind, it can it yeah. can figure out hey there's less wind let's that's go to correct. solar yeah, let's go to to uh, hydro or whatever yeah, other uh, sol that's solutions correct. are that's the function of the AI power operate. okay so why don't you tell us what we got right here yeah this is a what we call immersion cooling which we dip into the the, the uh, electrically insulated uh, current made by the SKM move we dip our high performance server into the current so this is in water yes. And it's keeping it nice and cool. Yeah, it's just a kind of uh, mineral oil. Okay. Yeah, which uh, electrically insulated. Okay. And it enhances the cooling capacity and cooling performance from the, the, the uh, server cooling. Besides keeping it cool, yeah. that's basically the only reason to submerge it in water, right? Yeah, 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 that's okay. Cool. Is there a lot? Out of, in the data center, how many of these, is everything submerged in water or? Actually, uh, in SK Telecom, uh, we have a TIDC that we are uh, testified for the, the, the high performance GPU servers. Okay. And we did for four months and successfully ended. And we are planning uh, on this year the, the, for the commercial, commercial service uh, with the Kakao. Just the starting, starting point. point. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So just right. test bed and starting the we try to expand our service to the commercial service. Okay. It, it's a very beginning stage. Very beginning stage. Okay. All right. Mm. Okay. Perfect. The, I'm assuming we're monitoring the data center right here, correct? Right? Yes, correct. This call, this is uh, the data center infrastructure management system. Okay. We apply AI technology to into uh, our DSIM. This okay. one is uh, showing the, the digital twin. The what? Digital twin. Okay. Yeah. And we also apply uh, the EWS, uh, which called the early warning system. Okay. A did you say AWS? No, EWS. EWS. What, EWS. Is, what is EWS? Oh, early, uh, we call early warning system based okay. on the, the, the over 20 years of the uh, data center operation exper experience from SK Broadband. Oh, okay. We apply, uh, we made a system, we developed a system and uh, adopt into our data center measurement okay. system. So it's, it's fully, it's just basically monitoring and seeing where the, uh, where the points are, uh, probably where it's hottest. Uh, Actually, you can see the car right here. The, the blue one is cold and the, the yellow or the red one is hot. Okay. And that's SK CES 2024. I want to thank the folks over at SK for uh, bringing me here to CES to see some of this stuff and to understand the technology a little bit better. We got a lot more videos over at CES 2024. So go over to geekazine.com, youtube.com forward slash geekazine, where you can like, subscribe, comment, and bell notification. You know what gets those YouTubers their wings.
very important. So until next time, you guys take care, or as they say in uh, Korea, which is thank you.